Yo, what's up, everybody? Come on over here, Captain. On this video today, come on a little bit closer to me. Oh, the smoke's blowing this way. So we're good. All right, y'all. Still better than the red tide. All right, y'all. On this video today, we're going to talk about Southern hospitality and what it means. Uh, you know, so I'm going to give you guys some tips in case you're thinking about moving to the south. As you guys can see, I'm in the south for real, for real. I mean, like, we're on a tractor right now. You know what I mean? Like, we're it's not a big old John Deere, but it's it's a tractor, nonetheless. So, I'm going to give you guys the real deal. Like, what it's really like living in the south. And the type of southern hospitality you're going to need. And what it means to have southern hospitality. Y'all ready for this? Let's do it. Number one thing that you need to know is no bros. All right? There's no bros here. It's all yes, sir, yes, ma'am. And that's really probably the first thing you need to know for your southern etiquette is there's no bros here. It's all yes, sir, yes, ma'am. When you do business here, one of the hardest things uh, to adapt to when I first came to Alabama was doing business. And it's because of this simple thing. The price here is firm. And that's if you're buying something or if you're also, um, let's say it's a service. Let's say somebody quotes you and they say, okay, it's $7,000 to do this. If you don't like the price, then just find somebody else. But don't even tell the person you're going to find somebody else. Just tell them you'll, you'll let them know when you're ready. So don't ever, ever um, try to bargain with people here. And uh, I know in the city you're used to doing that, Mr. Atlanta, Mr. Florida, Mr. Fort Myers, Mr. Connecticut, Mr. New York. I know you're used to bargaining and getting people to work for you for, for cheap. In the South, whatever the price is, that's the price. And it's really important that you understand that because we'll get through more points on this video. And at the end, I'll kind of summarize a few things that you need to know. First thing is, yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Never say bro to anybody. Um or dude or none of that garbage um price is firm and that has to do with uh respect respect is really important and that's why when somebody tells you a price on something you have to respect them um if you try to bargain with them you're suggesting that they're a crackhead basically so um i'm not saying that you should let people stiff you or whatever but um, if somebody if you're not interested in the price they're giving you just nicely say hey uh, we'll, we'll let you know when we're ready um, and or something like that. Don't ever say, uh, you know, hey, I'll, I'll pay you. That's one thing you definitely don't ever want to do is if somebody's providing you a service or something, say something like, oh, I'll pay you $50 or I'll pay you 100 or I'll pay you 1000 Don't ever do that. Um, and if you're buying something, you should ask the person, is it okay if I make an offer? But don't ever, ever try to um, bargain with people here because they're just going to kick you out of their property. Or if they're in your house, they're just going to walk away and you're going to wonder what's wrong with that guy. So I'm just saving you a lot of hassle and letting you know exactly how it is. And I've had people tell me, oh, I'm from South Georgia. I'm from North Florida. I'm like, yeah, that's kind of the South. But when you get to the real deep South, it's a whole different story. Uh, another thing is Sunday scheduling. Uh, don't ever think that you're going to get somebody to work on a holiday or a Sunday or even a Saturday. Some people will. But if you don't know the person, you need to be very careful about how you ask them. Um, if they're willing to do that, don't assume they're going to come on Saturday or Sunday. Uh, they probably won't. And if they do, you need to make sure you're very careful about how you word it and all that. Because for the most part here, um, a lot of people, Saturday, Sunday, that's like off off the, off the shard. That's not even possible. <clears throat> Another thing you need to know about the South is our Southern Hospitality is that people speak indirectly. So um, you need to learn how to take a clue. So if somebody's not going to be like, uh, hey, you know, you need to cut your grass. It's getting tall. They'll never say something like that because that's considered rude or disrespectful. They might say something like, you know, it's been raining a lot lately. You know, you got to figure out what that means. So when you talk to somebody, make sure you learn how to take clues and you may not even know uh, if they're really good at it. You may not even notice what they're trying to tell you. Until after you kind of, for, you know, the conversation's over, you go home and you think about it. Like, oh, this person was trying to tell me that. And even after five or six months here, I still don't get what they're trying to tell me until I sit there and think about it. So um, everything's indirect and you should probably do the same thing to other people. Um, 
I don't know, like, let's say you're going to fire somebody, I wouldn't say, hey, you suck, you're fired. I would be like, you know, hey, it might be good for you to take a few days off or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, just be really indirect because other people are being indirect and um, learn how to take a clue. Like, really learn how to take a clue because they're not going to tell you directly, uh, you know, please move your car. They're just going to sit there. And by them sitting there, that means move your car. So they're not going to hawk the horn and flake you off. They're going to just sit there. But them sitting there kind of insinuates that you need to move so that's pretty much how that goes as far as indirect communication and that will take you months to master but um be aware of indirect communication um, and also how you communicate because if you communicate directly it could really send up the wrong message the nice thing is they know you're not from around here don't even try when you get out of your car, they already know you're not from around here. The clothes you wear, just out of the haircut, the shoes, the talk, everything. So don't even try to cover that up. Just be whoever you are. They're going to know They know whoever you are just by looking at you. Uh, for example, Katie over here is definitely from Michigan. <clears throat> no hiding that. The next one is... Uh, I have a lot of people who... They tell me, you know, I just moved here from California, but I'm, I'm red. You know I'm not blue. <clears throat> you're not really as red as you think you are. So don't ever assume that because you're you think you're conservative in any way. You're like I, I just I I'll talk to people who are from the city and they think they're conservative and uh, they're actually extremely liberal for the standards here. So th if you think you're conservative, just keep that to yourself. Uh you're not really going to top the charts it's other it's kind of like you might think it's hot in alabama but if you went to like the sahara desert it's really hot there so what you consider hot here is in, 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 it means nothing so um or you might think wisconsin's cold but if you went to the north pole that's really cold so it's kind of like that so uh don't think because you're you consider yourself uh conservative that they're going to consider you conservative when they see the car you drive, the clothes you wear, you're already, you're not even, it's not even possible for you to be conservative for their standards. Uh, you're actually going to be looked at very liberally. Um, so don't think you're, and I mean, and I, and I know real life examples of that. I've already brought friends up here and they think they're conservative. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, the neighbors are like, who's that uh, little liberal you had visit you earlier today? So uh, don't think that you're conservative because you're conservative wherever you are. For the standards here, you're actually liberal. So. Um, once you know somebody, you refer to them as their last name. So don't ever get comfortable enough for people to use their first names. Even if they use your first name, continue to use their last name until they tell you otherwise. Um, keep your formalities at all times. So, uh, always, always use people's last names, uh, that's very important until you reach a different level with them or unless they tell you to stop doing that. Um, so don't get comfortable with people and think you can use their first name. Uh, always continue with your mannerisms and your code of honor, uh, which you're going to have to have here, regardless of how other people act. So it's just because other people drop their hospitality, they drop their formality, you don't drop yours. Continue to have your, for your formality and your mannerism. Um, even people who are not believers or who are uh, atheists can be uh, very, very knowing of the Bible. And they live by the Bible as a matter of fact. Uh, they take everything very literally. Um, for example, uh, the left hand must not know what the right hand is doing. They take that very literally. So uh, if somebody's helping you or they're hurting you, you're not even going to be able to tell right away. Um, so it takes a long time to read people here. And it's really important that you understand that. Um, so consider that uh, one way to kind of open open roads here with people is if you also become familiar with the book and because they're all very familiar with the book. And again, even if they're not, oh, a mosquito. I haven't had a mosquito bite in months. That's weird. Uh, so even though you personally may not care about the book too much, it's important for you to know it because even people here that aren't really like that, they know it to heart. And it's going to help you understand, uh, especially if you take everything literally, the way people work because a lot of the principles and mannerisms in honor code is based off of that so it's going to help you to kind of read people better and understand where they're coming from because they do take everything literally um 
hear people will say stuff like, I might know someone who blank. Uh, people here are indirect, like I said, so they're not going to say, I'm going to kick you in the butt. They might say something like, I know somebody who will kick you in the butt. Or, uh, or I'm going to sue you. They might say, uh, you know, somebody could probably sue you. Uh, so that's really important. And it's very important that you're careful to speak to you, uh, about yourself as a third person. Always uh, it's considered threatening if you don't. So if you say something like, I could sue you, that's considered extremely threatening. You might say something like, you know, somebody could sue you or I know somebody who might sue you for that. So always talk to yourself, uh, referring to yourself as third person. And I think that goes back to the book as you're not supposed to brag or you're not supposed to, um, something about humility or something like that. I don't really know where it comes from, but it all goes back to that. Um, so you can actually threaten people without knowing it. So it's very important, important that if you're talking about yourself, that you always talk in third person. Never say something like, I did this, or I went there, or I've seen a lot of places that you haven't. That's considered extremely, um, extremely offensive. You want to tone it down and say something like, you know, a lot of people are able to travel and they're able to see a lot of the world. That may sound a little bit more non-threatening or less offensive. Um, and that goes, a lot of that goes back to uh, do not let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Uh, and that goes to people that are helping you too. In other words, it's not just people that are trying to be hostile. Even if somebody's trying to help you, it may take you a long time to figure out who's on your side and who's not. Uh, because they play by that rule, whether you're be, whether being good or they're being bad, they always play by that rule. So you're never going to know exactly where they're coming from because that's just the way they are. So you're not really going to be able to read people right off the bat. It might take a long time for you to read people. Um, also, there's no rush here. So don't honk the horn. Don't overtake people in traffic. All that is considered offensive. And if you do it to the wrong person, you might find yourself understanding why you don't do it. So don't do it. And there's no exceptions to that rule. Even if somebody decides to waste five minutes of your time, you're going to sit there and have them waste five minutes of your time. Um, so just learn that. There's no rush to get anywhere. If you're late to wherever you're going, they'll understand. Um, uh, never ask for help directly. Nothing is direct. So even if you're in a tight spot, I say you break down by the side of the road, and you need to ask the person if you can park your car on their front lawn. You're not going to knock on your door and their door and say, hey, can I park my car on your front lawn? You might want to say something like, um, hey, uh, would it be, do you know anybody who would be okay with my car be, being here? Or, you know, find a way of wording it that is not direct. So never ask for help directly. Um, I had a, an, a situation in North Florida. I was in Homosassa. And I rented a boat, and the boat got stuck in the rocks. Uh, and nobody actually helped me. But what they did was, when they would ride their boats past us, they would ride the boat very, very fast. And it would create a wave. And every time that wave came through, we were able to push the boat a foot off the rocks until we got it off. So nobody directly helped us. But everybody who rode their boat past us would floor it to create a wave to help us get some momentum. So people aren't going to be direct about helping you here. They're going to help you indirectly. Um, so it's really important that you understand that in any way. Like if somebody's going to give somebody your business card, they're not going to tell you. Um, and uh, if they're, whatever they're going to do, you're not even going to be able to tell who's helping you. So uh, again, back to the left hand, right hand thing. Uh, even when you're angry at people, you have to keep your formality, your composure, and never break your code of honor. So there's no, it doesn't matter how angry you get, you never, ever uh, break your uh, your code of honor. And that, that's your mannerisms, your etiquette, and all that. Uh, it's People do shoot their guns on Saturdays. And, uh, again, everything's indirect. So, you know, somebody shooting a gun on the wrong day of the week could actually indicate a hostility. Um, everybody on Saturday morning usually shoots their guns because other people aren't working. So if you shoot your gun Saturday morning... Uh, again, if you don't shoot your guns, you're looked at as an outsider. So if you're moving to the country from the city, if you're allowed to do it where you live and other people are doing it, you can do it in a safe fashion. It's definitely a good way to break the ice on a Saturday morning. Uh, it's going to let other people know that you're also, uh, you know, they may look at it as maybe you're not a felon. Maybe you understand their culture and all that. So it's important that you shoot guns on Saturdays if you're allowed to. 
Um, even if it's not something you would normally do, uh, if you do it every once in a while, it's good. And if you do it too much, it can send the wrong message because people here, again, they're very indirect about their hostility. So uh, you can definitely send the wrong message. Um, so that all goes into that indirect communication. Uh, if you have them, uh, if you don't have guns and you're not shooting them, they might just assume you're a felon or something. So it could definitely turn people off. I don't know, you know, if you, if you don't shoot guns, they might think you're super liberal or they might think you're a felon or something. So it's important that you do uh, exercise your rights um, whenever you're able to. Don't try to prove anything to anyone. Eventually, people will figure you out. So um, that's the biggest mistake that we make as outsiders is thinking that we have to prove something. You don't have anything to prove to anybody. Nobody pays your bills. So uh, there's no reason for you to um, try to portray anything at all. Eventually, your real, your real colors are going to show and so are other people. So you don't immediately need to get any type of response from everybody. Um, when they're ready to approach you, they'll approach you. Um, so never try to initiate conversation or contact. Always let other people be the ones that do that for you. When they're ready, they'll approach you. Don't trust anyone. Uh, people here can be backstabbed. Don't think because people are being friendly that they're your friends. They can be uh, backstabbing, hypocritical, cynical, gossipers. So never say anything bad about anyone. If somebody comes up to you and says, hey, Mr. Jones is kind of crazy, isn't he? You might want to say something like, well, I don't really pay attention to other people or something like that. You don't ever want to say something like, yeah, he was outside naked the other day. You want to kind of uh, uh, never, ever say anything bad about anybody uh, because you don't know if the person who's pretending to be friendly is actually trying to get you to talk bad about somebody else. And then they're going to run and tell Mr. Jones, hey, Mr. Jones, you know, this person over there told me you did this and that. So it's really important that you don't trust people and that what you tell one person, even if those people like don't get along, you think they don't get along with each other. So you think, oh, these guys don't get along. So it's OK for me to talk bad about him. Uh, they've, been, they've been knowing each other for 40 years. You just got here yesterday. So they're going to run tell that person, hey, this guy over here is talking bad about you. Um, so don't ever assume uh, that you're able to gossip or take part in any of that. You need to stay out of all that. Uh, so if somebody tells you any gossip, the best thing to do is to stop them and say, hey, you know what? You know, I don't really care what other people do. I just kind of mind my own business. So uh, it's very important that you put an end to gossiping really quickly and, um, and whatnot. Uh, also, people are going to if you do try to prove something, if you do try to portray something, then people are going to blindly assume that they're that you're going to act a certain way to control you. And then they're going to start expecting things from you if you're able to. to portray something so it's best that you don't portray anything at all uh, that way you don't have to deal with uh, anybody trying to manipulate you because they're just going to assume automatically blindly assume that you're they're able to hold uh, your code of honor against you because you're expected to live up to whatever that is so so beware of people acting friendly if someone uh, is your friend you won't even know it and again that's really important if someone's really your friend you won't even know it. They'll just give somebody your number behind your back or whatever to help you, whatever. But you're not going to know if somebody's your friend. They're not going to show it. Again, they, they're, your right hand can't know what the left hand's doing. So don't assume that you're going to uh, have people help you openly. Like since I got here in Alabama, things have really gone well for me. Like really, really well for me. And uh, I don't even know who it is that's helping me. But somebody's obviously helping me. I don't know who it is. So... Uh, it goes back to not left hand, not knowing what their hand is doing, all that. So don't ever assume that people aren't friendly. You just they're not going to show it. Uh, people are not going. They're not. They uh, they're not saints. It's all in outwardly appearance. So don't assume that southern hospitality means that people are genuine or anything like that. Uh, it's all an outwardly appearance thing. It's all exterior. Don't don't think. It, don't ever assume it's genuine. In fact, you might get hit with a liability thing where somebody may try to act like they're your friend, blah, 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 like they're doing anything for you. And then the, when, the, when you ask them, hey, I need something, they might be like, oh, uh, you know, uh, my doctor said I can't lift heavy boxes or, uh, oh, you know, uh, you know, I could get hurt doing that or, you know, whatever. Or you could get hurt using my tractor type of thing, you know what I mean? Or I don't want to damage your property by going on it with my tractor. So you're going to get hit with all types of liabilities from people. So it's all an outwardly appearance of friendliness. Don't ever assume that, they're, that it's, a, it's a clear thing. It's all outwardly apparent. Uh, dealing with law enforcement, you have to be extremely, extremely respectful. Yes, sir. Yes, please. Never relax your mannerisms, especially around law enforcement. You will regret it. 
flaunting your wealth is considered wrong so somebody might be wearing a dirty old truck and some blue jeans and you might think this guy's broke but he might have a million dollars you're just you're never gonna know it all goes back to the principles of uh of the book so somebody could be a millionaire and you can ask them if they're a millionaire and they're not going to tell you so don't assume uh wealth is kind of a private thing here you're never going to be able to read somebody as far as how much money they got and don't ever assume because somebody's living a certain way that they don't have money it may just all be a outward appearance you might be like oh this person's living like a dog and it could all be an outward appearance um and when you start living your normal life people are going to start to consider you as extravagant for doing things like changing your car or buying a new pair of shoes they're going to consider that as an like like you're belligerently being uh, obnoxious with your wealth even if you're not so uh, me, I don't really care how I'm being read when it comes to money because uh, it's all a perception thing. But you do need to be aware that a lot of people here are like that. And that you need to be careful uh, to assume that somebody may just be putting on an act. They could have a lot of money and they're just really playing it off like they don't. Uh, and they'll take advantage of you that way too. So you need to be really careful of that. Yeah. Uh, justice can be hands-on so don't ever assume that law enforcement is the only way justice takes place so a lot of times just especially for thieves um people who do anything out of the ordinary those people can have justice handed to them in a very specific way um so don't ever assume that they're going to play textbook especially law enforcement a lot of times law enforcement will step out of the book so don't ever assume that the, everything's textbook it won't be textbook that's why you want to keep your mannerisms and all that in place uh, and sometimes they're just waiting for you to show a little bit of an attitude so they can uh, get you, uh, line you up real quick. Um, so that's another important point. And I know I'm kind of reading this back to you, but I just want to be very to the point and direct on this. This isn't really a colorful video. This is just teaching you guys the code of life over here. <clears throat> So not everybody upkeeps the honor code. Just because somebody else is lacking on theirs, you still keep up yours. <clears throat> I think we've kind of covered that a little bit. I think proud can expedite your finalization. So uh, always be humble at all times. What happens when you don't uphold your honor system? So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, again, we talked about an honor system. So if you don't uphold it, what can happen is uh, it could lead to economical exclusion. You may not open a door for somebody at a gas station today. And tomorrow your lawn guy doesn't show up or your roofing guy doesn't want to work for you. You can't get nobody to fix your car. And you're wondering, why is everybody against me? It's because you didn't open a door for somebody over there. So it's important to keep your mannerisms. Uh, you may not think you need economical inclusion. You might think, oh, I have a lot of money. But uh, when there's only three plumbers in town and neither one of them want to come work for you, all right, guys, so yeah, economical uh, inclusion is never guaranteed. So don't ever assume uh, that you're gonna get it. And uh, it's important for you to keep your mannerisms because next thing you know, there's only two realtors in town and neither one of them wanna sell your house for you. Or next thing you know, you need a plumber and no plumber in town wants to work for you. So don't think you're be above and beyond economical inclusion. Always keep your mannerisms. Uh, someone's enemy is worth more than you as an outsider so don't ever think that somebody who you think they're enemies aren't going to conspire against you together to take you out of the way so you're an outsider so you're, you're worth less than somebody's enemy so don't ever think that as an outsider you're going to have any type of special privilege um, if you call law enforcement or if you call um, the county or anything like that or anything you're trying to do to bring dirt on somebody else um, it's possible that they may come down harder on you than they are on the person who you're trying to get in trouble or whatever. So don't ever assume that you as an outsider are gonna have any more advantage than them. They could be the cop that shows up, could be the guy's cousin or you know anything like that. So don't ever assume that as an outsider, you're gonna have any type more of swing in power. If anything, they're gonna come down harder on you. So um, that has to do with another principle that people live by here, which is, uh, if you live in a glass house, don't throw stones. Um, so that's about it. That's some really basic, simple things you need to know about living in a place like the South, the real South. And um, I would recommend that if you're moving here, you pay close attention to those things I said. Um, 
the, not everybody lives by that stuff, but uh, it's going to make your stay a lot quicker. And I hope you take that advice. Checking out Jose from Southern Life. And that's the real uh, tour of what you need to know when it comes to Southern hospitality and etiquette in the South. The real South. Checking out.